Welcome back to Anchor Designs. I'm James, and today uh, we are making some octagonal uh, planters, which, um, yeah, a little bit of a project to do. So let's jump straight into it and get started. Okay, so in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one that I badly made earlier, and I say that because um, I've, <laughs> I've done segmented projects uh, recently, and this isn't really how I would normally do this. So it's a lot larger than, than what I've done before. Quick backstory of this, we have a very small garden, uh, and we are not gardening people. So we want to put a bush in it, something that looks pretty, but you don't have to really do a lot to it, if you know what I mean. But alongside that, we want it to look nice. I like a bit of woodworking, so I thought I'd make them a little bit snazzy. Now, we like modular uh, because it's a nice sounding word. And the fact that we want to put these down and if we want to, we can move plants around them fairly easily to organise and make the garden look as nice as we possibly can. So I've designed these to be the uh, inner circumference of a standard builder's bucket. So these are usually around 320 millimetres. And what this allows you to do is, if you want to move your plant or you want to take it out and do some gardening to it, then you can take the bucket out and it's a lot easier. It's going to, uh, instead of just putting soil in here, it will help prolong the life of the planters. And it looks quite nice and a little interesting and it's not something that you can buy from your local you know, DIY store. So to start off, I am thick as pudding, so any tool that makes my life easier, makes the job easier, makes everybody happy. So I've gone onto a website called Block Layer, and I'll leave a link to this in the description. But what you basically do is you put in your, how big you want it, how many segments, and it does all the work for you. Okay, so I'll just run you through the setup that I have done. Uh, but again, if you want to copy this exactly what I'm doing, I'll put a proper screenshot of the actual um, dimensions that I've got here. But it's 174 millimeters uh, in length on the longest side. The shortest side is 122.5. The angle that you want to be setting this to is 67.5 degrees on here. And really handy tool is one of these. These are about 15, 16 quid uh, from Tool Station or wherever. They're the Trend uh, Digital Vernier um, Protractor. Digital Protractor, not a vernier. So I've got that for checking the angle. And then I've got uh, this tool, which is um, it's actually a, a, an engineering depth gauge. Uh, but this is quite handy because it's got a wide base and you can uh, make sure that the thickness is the same. You can just use a, a standard combination square, that works fine as well, but I just like using this because I have it and it was the first thing I picked up the drawer. So there's nothing in particular really exciting about my setup itself. Uh, I've just got a, another a bit of an angle on here that I can use that as a stop and then that's going to allow me to cut uh, repetitively and uh, you know they're all the same. Now what I've done is just put a small chamfer on the underside of this because you do get a bit of sawdust build up if you haven't got a dust extractor that's set up. These saws are pretty bad for uh, sawdust. But what you want to do is just keep a little sweeping brush and keep it clean while you're doing it because the more sawdust is built up on the bed then you can, uh, you can potentially affect the angle of this. But again, they're just planters going in your garden. They're going to warp, they're going to move. Doesn't really matter. Get on with life. That's the setup. Okay, so all of these different individual buckets are one length of 4.8 meters of, you know, one batch, I'm going to call them. 
What I found with the one that I've just done is that you do get varying thicknesses of each one because obviously the timber are meant for decking, they're not really meant for this type of thing. Now what you could do is, I've got a lunchbox planer down there, you could go through them all and plane them, but I, again, just planters, not going too much into it. But if you can kind of keep these to individual sizes and their own, well they're in their own bucket, and then the next stage what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to get this linisher here, you could do this by hand if you're extremely bored, uh, but we're just going to be taking off the furry bits. Ideally we'd be using a zero insert on my uh, chop saw, but I just haven't got around to doing it. So it won't take long, podcast, and you can kind of blast your way through it. We press on. <laughs> The next day. Okay, so all these are now ratchet strapped together. Uh, they're all glued up. The varying thicknesses it's going to drive me nuts i'm not going to flatten these down i'm going to let these dry and then i've got another round to do but as i say i've ran, <laughs> I've ran out of straps so i'm not in a, any rush i'm going to give it a little bit of time let them all um, tighten up and dry and then we'll start putting them together but seven rings makes one planter One eternity later. So the question now is, do we go for this? this? These are just on loose. Or do we go for that? That or that? I think that would age better than that, but I don't know. And that's gonna drive me nuts if I don't get those perfect. And now we play the waiting game. So now what I'm gonna do is something that the bucket can rest on, and I'm not gonna to get too technical with this. This is just some lath, and this is gonna be fine. But uh, what I am gonna do, instead of screwing this down, is I've got a bit of an idea for a bit later on. So I'm going to cut a section out into here, glue this in, and then put one screw either side. You'll see what I mean. I'm just using a marking knife to then scribe, and I'm gonna use my chop saw to actually take out uh, that section of material. Okay, so there's the section that I want to cut out. Now the saw is unplugged. And I'm just going to set this. Whoa, that makes you nervous, doesn't it? Whoa. Uh, I'm just setting this to stop uh, roughly, roughly around there. And then I can use this to take out that uh, that bill, bit of a chunk there.
Okay, so the next step is we're going to have to raise these off the ground. Now, what I was going to do is because I've cut these flush, these are now the bottom is going to be this section. So on the inside of this, after doing just a little bit of research here, is I bought some copper slug tape uh, because it's going to have a bucket here, it's going to be warm and wet and slugs like that. So I'm going to put some copper tape on the inside of these rings as well as to get it off of the ground I'm going to use these nut inserts. So these are M6, so I'm going to be drilling an M7 hole and there's going to be three points of contact on the floor, like a tripod, and which means it won't rock or move. Now I'm hoping these are going to be enough. These are dome-headed stainless steel um, bolts, so it shouldn't be, you know, it should be last for quite a bit of time. Okay. Okay, so I'll put just a little bit of tape on my drill. I'm just going to measure its length in relation to this nut insert, which is going to be around there. So I'm not going to drill too deep. And I'm not going to go two nuts on this. I know I'm going to drill one roughly. Probably shouldn't do there. I'm going to offset here. So I'm going to go there. One over here. And then one over here. Like so. This is my hole, and then I'm just going to wind these in like so. And then repeat nine times, so twelve times, and then uh, we're done, ish. Right, so uh, I've just broken this. I've dropped it on the floor and I've cracked it. So I've put some glue in here, and little tip for you is get your air compressor. And then you can blow the glue further down into the crack. Yeah.